What's going on all my healthcare professionals? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. We're continuing on with our cardiovascular assessment and electrocardiogram like a boss series and we're going to be discussing cardiac rhythm recognition using methodical review. So to begin, it's very helpful for us to understand where our electrocardiogram rhythms are originating from in regards to the electrical conduction pathway so that we know what's working, what's not working, and how to treat it. So to begin, rhythms originating in the sinoatrial node, that's our SA node, are our sinus rhythms. We've got, for example, our sinus, uh, normal sinus rhythm, sinus brady, sinus arrhythmias, and sinus arrest. We have rhythms that originate within our atria. That's our atrial rhythms, our atrial premature complexes, atrial tachycardias, proximal atrial tachycardia, multifocal atrial tachycardia, wandering atrial pacemakers, our atrial flutter, and our atrial fibrillation. Rhythms originating from the atrioventricular node, that's our AV node, are junctional rhythms. So we've got our junctional premature complexes, Junctional escape rhythms, junctional tachycardia, our accelerated junctional rhythms, as well as our proximal junctional tachycardias. And lastly, rhythms originating from the Purkinje fibers and ventricles are our ventricular rhythms. So we have our premature ventricular complexes. That could be bigeminy, trigeminy, multifocal, and couplets, ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation, torsades de poing, idioventricular rhythms, accelerated idioventricular rhythms, and capture beats. In order to interpret an ECG, we have to use methodical review. So step one is we want to review the rhythm for regularity or irregularity. So in our first example, we have a regular rhythm. It'll evenly march out with each R wave. An irregular rhythm, as seen in example two, will exhibit a pattern. It can either be regularly irregular or irregularly irregular. Moving on to step two, we want to review the rate for normal, slow, or fast rates. A normal rate is between 60 to 100 beats per minute and is initiated in the sinoatrial node, as seen here in the example. As listed here in our examples, we have bradycardias and bradyarrhythmias. So bradycardias will have a rate of less than 60 beats per minute, but they will be initiated in that sinoatrial node. Whereas with our bradyarrhythmias, they will also have a rate of less than 60 beats per minute, but they will be initiated outside of that sinoatrial node. Moving on to step three, we want to look at the deflection and appearance of our P waves. Beginning with deflection of our P waves, we have a positive deflection, which will be initiated in the SA node. A negative deflection is a rhythm that is not initiated in that SA node. And biphasic is an initial positive deflection corresponds with a right atrial activation and a subsequent negative deflection corresponding with a left atrial activation. Reviewing our appearance of our P waves, we could have a notched P wave, which is a sign of left atrial enlargement or mitral stenosis. We could have a peaked P wave, which is a sign of right atrial enlargement or pulmonary hypertension. Or we could have no P waves, they're absent, and that means that the rhythm was not initiated in our SA node. Step four in our methodical review is reviewing the PR interval for normal, shortened, or prolonged length. A normal length is between 0.12 to 0.2 seconds wide. Shortened PR intervals causes tachycardias, AV junctional rhythms, or Wolf-Parkinson's white rhythms. Prolonged PR intervals can be caused by bradycardias, AV blocks, atrioventricular blocks, hypothyroidism, and hypothermia. After reviewing our P waves, we want to move on to step five and review the QRS interval for duration, regularity, and appearance. A normal length is less than 0.12 seconds. When that QRS complex becomes wider, we have to denote, is it a left bundle branch block, a right bundle branch block, or is this a paced rhythm? With our left bundle branch block, you're going to see a singular deflection, either positive or negative. 
These can be caused by aortic stenosis, ischemic heart disease, hyperkalemia, anterior myocardial infarction, or digoxin toxicity. With our right bundle branch block, you're going to see a biphasic deflection. Causes for those could be a pulmonary embolus, right ventricular hypertrophy, ischemic heart disease, and myocarditis. If you need help reviewing your bundle branch blocks, I'm gonna leave a link up here in the corner for you to refer back to. Lastly, we have our paced rhythms. They can either be atrial paced, ventricular paced, or atrial ventricular paced. Again, if you need to review those pace rhythms, I'm gonna leave a link up here in the corner. So we've looked at our P wave and our QRS intervals. Now we move on to step six, where we review the ST interval for either normal, depressed, or elevated appearance. Changes generally to this ST segment will be caused by myocardial ischemic conditions. So as you can see here in our first example, we have a normal ST segment. As we move over to the right, we start to see ST depression, an isoelectric line that should be normal is starting to dip down and become depressed. What can cause this? A big thing in regards to ST depression is ischemia. You can also have additional causes such as digoxin toxicity, pulmonary embolism, hyperventilation. You can have a right ventricular or left ventricular hypertrophy. We go back to those bundle branch blocks, either right or left, and hypomagnesium can also cause this condition. Moving further to the right, we have ST segment elevation. Now, what is a big factor with ST segment elevation? We're looking at infarction or some kind of injury. In addition, we can also have digoxin toxicity, pulmonary embolism, hyperventilation, all those same things that are caused with our ST depression, but we can also be looking at hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, idioventricular rhythms, as well as our paced rhythms. Moving on to step seven, just like we did with our P waves, we're gonna be looking at the deflection and appearance of our T waves. So deflection of our T waves. If we have a positive deflection, that represents ventricular repolarization. If we have a negative depression of our T waves, we're looking at uh, normal findings in children. You'll see this a lot normally with our children population. Myocardial ischemia or infarction bundle branch blocks, pulmonary embolisms, hypertrophic embolisms, as well as a raised intracranial pressure can cause that negative deflection. In regards to appearance, we can have peaked or flat T waves. With our peaked T waves, you're gonna see that a lot with our hyperkalemia. Think hyper means elevated, you're gonna see elevated T waves. With our flat appearance, it's either ischemic or potentially hypokalemia. Now we're going to move on to our last part, step eight, our methodical review, and we're going to be discussing QD duration as being either normal, short, or prolonged. So Q, the QT interval measures the amount of time for ventricular depolarization as well as repolarization. A short QT interval can be caused by either digitalis, hypercalcemia, or hyperkalemia. With our prolonged QT intervals, we're looking at heart failure, ischemic heart disease, rheumatic fever, myocarditis, electrolyte imbalances is a big one when we have a prolonged QT interval, hypothermia, mitral valve prolapse, and it can also be related to medications causing prolongation in our QT interval. I just wanted to know something important before we moved on from step eight, and that is medications in regards to prolongation of QT intervals. A big one here that you're gonna see is that amiodarone. So something that we discussed in our ACLS video, and if you haven't seen that, I highly recommend that you go back and watch that video, is QT prolongation and why we only give a maximum of 450 milligrams when we are providing this to our cardiac arrest patients. So you know the initial dose was 300, 
and then a secondary dose can be 150. If we go over that 450 milligrams, this is what can happen. We can cause that prolongation of those QT intervals causing major, major problems. So I want you to kind of think about that when you're critically thinking about our amiodarone patients. We don't want to give more than 450 milligrams in a 24 hour period, especially with our cardiac arrest patients and we've given it for um, the ACLS algorithm guidelines. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind as you're going through your ACL classes. This is gonna be very helpful for you. So as we end this video, let's do a little bit of a methodical review wrap up. So we're gonna use an example of soccer players on a team. So number one, our waveform appearance. Are all of our key players lined up correctly? Do we have a regular rhythm? P wave followed by a QRS. Are all of the key players working together? First degree, second degree, and our bundle branch blocks. Is another player blocking our play? Is somebody blocking one of our nodes causing these different heart blocks? Our escape beats and rhythms. Is the next key player ready to go? If not, we can have these escape beats and rhythms. Third degree heart block. Are all of the key players no longer communicating with each other? That's when we start seeing these weird rhythms that we start having to pace. And lastly, tachycardia or bradycardia. Is the key players playing too fast or is somebody exhausted playing in the back causing our rhythm to be a little slow? I hope that this video was helpful in elevating your cardiac knowledge and helping you pass those exams like a boss. Make sure that you check out my website at www.nursechung.com where you can get copies of these resources, the PowerPoints, as well as test questions that I will be including with each one of these videos within the series. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. I love answering your questions and make sure you follow me on my social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, as well as here on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you turn on that notification bell. Until next time, I hope that you're having a wonderful day and I can't wait to see you all again soon. Bye.